All right, I'm here at the inner bike outdoor demo day one flew into Las Vegas today and uh, the guys from DVO suspension were very very nice to throw on a shock and a fork on my bike so I could go out and ride it and uh, Bryson jr. here is gonna tell me all about <laughs> setting up suspension for the normal man I'm uh, you know usually it's like oh your weight set it yeah. up at your waist but that's a good starting point okay that's a very good starting point um, our stuff is definitely extremely tuner slash user friendly um, it's definitely for the tinkerer it's not for the kind of set it and forget it kind of guy um, yeah we we take a lot more time to tune our stuff and if you do take the time you will be rewarded for it awesome um, awesome so yeah you start with the rear shock um, yeah this is our new topaz uh, air shock um, on the other side here you can there's a there's a three position compression switch which make, makes it easy to reach down and throw it into climbing mode or you can put it in the middle setting for like a traversing okay. type setting or open for downhill. Nice. Uh, yeah, and then rebound here, uh, pretty straightforward on that. Um, and then here is actually bladder pressure, which is something that's very different on our shock than everybody else. Um, you can adjust that. So basically what that'll do, that'll make the shock either firmer or softer throughout the entire stroke. It won't change a certain portion of the travel, it'll change the whole thing. So if, you look, if you're looking at the spring curve on a, as a graph, it's basically just gonna move it up or down. Okay, um, nice. So yeah, you have, you have about 20 Lots to 30. Lots of control. Yeah, PSI you can work with there. I'm gonna do some quick on the fly tuning here. It's pretty easy, just let the, shark, let the air out of the shock. Remove the O-ring there, if you let the air out. Nice. And the, air, the air can slides right down. Yeah. Um, if you if you slide it down a little bit more, you can have access to the negative side. Okay. Um, so which you can put the spacers in there. These are the spacers here. Um, they come with all the shocks, so. Yeah. If you do pick one up, there's about five or six in, that come with them that you can mess with. Uh, VPP bikes usually feel pretty good with one of them in the positive. Okay. It just depends on, on what you personally like. Yeah, so we got a, a spacer in the positive there. So we're gonna throw the air can back on. Uh, throw the O-ring on there. And then air it up and you're good to go. Sweet. So typically what we like to do is every every 50 PSI we compress it. That transfers air from the positive to the negative. Okay, okay. Or from the negative to the positive, it mm -hmm. just transfers it. You can always do this after the fact too, but you have to really smack on it. So by putting in that spacer right there, we were we were messing with the positive. Yeah, right? so you actually made the shock more progressive. If you are riding your, your current bike and you feel like it, your shock is too harsh off the top and then you're also bottoming out too easy, that means the shock is too linear. Okay. So that is usually fixed by making the shock a little bit more progressive. So it makes it more difficult for you to reach full travel. Okay, okay. And then what you can actually do is run a lower air pressure because you're making it harder to bottom out. Mm -hmm. So then that's going to make the beginning of the stroke softer. And it's then the constant t tweaking and yeah. uh, playing with it. Right? <laughs> it's really endless. Yeah. I mean, you can keep doing it all day till yeah. you're blue in the face, yeah. but it it uh it's definitely worth it if you take the time to do it. You I mean, it's always cool to learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time make it happen. That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why you're teaching me. Yeah. So yeah, we'll try this. Okay, so we're at 155, so we'll probably do the whole bounce on thing and all that. Yeah. Trying to hit 25% sag. 30% is usually the best. Cool. All right, I hopped on. We did the little sit test and we measured this. It's exactly 30%. Just perfect right there. Okay, so now we've got the topaz set up and we're going to start setting up the diamond. And this is the LT version, the 35 millimeter stanchions. Yep. It's set at 160 millimeters of travel. What yep. does it go? 140 to 170? This one or 150? Um, you can to actually go. You can actually go as low as you want. Oh, okay. But if, you go, <laughs> yeah. if you start going lower than like 120, 130, yeah, and you start messing with the air spring a little bit, yeah, and it yeah. gets a little bit funky. <laughs> but you can do it if you want. If you're a mad scientist. Yeah. But the uh, the new boost one. Uh, actually goes to 170, whereas the non-boost goes to 160. So yeah, so we'll start off with the basic adjustments. 
Um, so here you have your low speed. So your low speed is going to be a quick range. And what does low speed mean? Low speed actually means, a lot of people interpret low speed and high speed by how fast you're actually riding and hitting things, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have anything to do with that. It actually has everything to do with how fast the suspension's moving. Okay. So low speed refers to low speed suspension movements. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with how fast you're actually going. Yes. It has everything to do with how fast the fork's moving. Yes. You're riding at a slower pace. Yes. Um, and you're hitting things where the fork's not getting very it's deep just in the travel. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of low speed stuff. Okay. If you go to the high speed range here, that's definitely stuff where it's big impacts. Yes. Um, so if you're drops, G outs, um, like really throwing it into bull turns, uh, where you where you're getting into the travel really quick. Yeah, that's all high speed stuff. Okay, okay. So um, It's all a really usable range like pe a lot of times people are scared to go to Maximum ends of a, tr of a range. Yes um, Just in case you know, they, they feel like it's gonna spike on them. Yes. It's gonna hurt or whatever. Okay um, Our stuff isn't gonna do that. It's gonna it's just gonna feel firm if you max out your high speed it's definitely gonna feel really firm. Okay. Um, it's not gonna be painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that. So the low speed here, so one is your open setting. So you'll be on that for descending. Yep. And then, so you can do two, three, or four, or five for whatever, if you wanna run it like that, yeah. you can. Um, and then six is like climbing platform. So it makes okay. it pretty firm. And then down here, this is our OTT, stands for off the top. This is a feature that sets our stuff apart from everybody else. Um, this, what that means is basically exactly what it's called. It adjusts the off the top. Okay. So it's only gonna affect the first inch and a half of the travel. Uh, okay. And it has no effect on the mid stroke or the end stroke. Okay. So basically you can get away with running a higher air pressure. Say if you like, if you're somebody that likes their stuff really progressive you're you know you're an aggressive rider um, you can run a high air pressure to get your mid stroke support high and then your bottom out resistance good and then run a lot of the off the top so it's really supple so you're not your hands aren't getting beat up yes so yes. you're it's basically removing any sort of compromise that you would normally be faced with okay so it's a five mil allen key okay adjustment um, so typically we go in full 360 turns yes so if I want to make a if I want to tweak it at all, I'll do like two full full turns and then try it out. Nice. Um, but yeah, this is just basically your comfort. So the way I like to tune this fork, I like to set it up in two different steps. Um, I like to tune the beginning of the travel um, with the off the top, and then you tune your mid stroke and your end stroke through your air pressure. So like I said, if you like it to be really firm at the end for big hits and you're an aggressive guy, then run a higher air pressure, set it up for that using your air pressure, and then adjust your off the top okay. for your sensitivity. Okay. I would say I'm not as an aggressive rider. Like I'm not taking big hits, I'm not uh -huh. taking big jumps, so I don't mind being a little softer, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you are like that, if you like running um, a softer setting yeah. throughout the stroke, then you can actually run less off the top okay. and then make the fork a little bit more linear so that way it's not just wanting to dive into the yeah, travel. Yeah, yeah. If you do want to run a lower pressure, you can you run less off the top, so less sensitive, and then that'll keep the fork from just bouncing up and down yes. like yes. like crazy. So. All right, so uh, yeah. we've got whatever stock air pressure is in there, so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna check it out? We're gonna yeah, play so with it? Air pressure with the fork, um, we usually start off with body weight. Okay, cool. Um, Let's do it. So for all you guys at home that are now interested in doing your own suspension style tuning or setting your own bike up, what I like to do or tell people is, is to set your bike up so it's balanced. So that mean, meaning that the front and the rear are moving the same amount when you compress them. Because um, even if your range, like your air pressures are, are too high for you or too soft, if they're both balanced, they're moving the same, your bike's still gonna feel pretty good. Um, where bikes start to feel really bad is when, say the fork is way softer than the back end and you're just stink yes. bugging all the time. Yeah, stink or, bugging. <laughs> yeah, or vice versa, you know, yeah. you're, you're all choppered out like yeah, a dirt yeah, bike. Yeah. And cool. So yeah, that's, that's 
best way to start. Yeah. Because even if it's wrong, it's still going to feel yes. pretty good. Yes. And this is what's great about having the man <laughs> set up your bike. Like, I'm still very noob about this. I don't mind asking stupid questions and just exposing my ignorance because I want to learn and I want to get better. But it's awesome to have an expert basically sit on your bike, feel it out. And he was even saying, like, okay, this, this shock's going to, or the fork is going to take a little while, take a couple runs to break in. Yeah. He can feel it. He knows he's around this enough to actually know. It's yep. pretty awesome. Yep, I see these things in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. So let's, yep. get, uh, let's get our gear on and go for a ride. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slick. I did the same thing last time. <laughs> Try to get a little rowdy. Sounded like glass breaking. Yeah. The dangers of Bootleg Canyon. Bryson flatted. He's gonna go down the road and I'm gonna keep going on this trail. Try not to flat myself. I do feel like I can get my front tire off the ground a lot easier on this, which is nice. Oh, I missed it. Didn't even see it. It's a tough proving ground out here. I'm just super concerned with damaging the bike getting a flat, so I really can't go as hard as I want to, especially since I already crashed earlier on that really loose stuff. But uh, you gotta go with uh, what you got, so get some laps in here, feel it out. So for those two little 15 minute runs, I felt like the suspension was very nice just as soft as I like it. Felt confident going down some uh, steep stuff and that hairy rocky stuff, hitting those bumps, everything I wanted it to do. You know, really the, the downside is the sketchy terrain and I'm on these carbon wheels with uh, some not, not as aggressive tires. So I was more worried about that, getting a flat and all that stuff. So I'm gonna have to put some more time, more miles on the suspension, dial it up, dial it down, play with it. 